It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, May 31st, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that's talking unsigned Flyers prospects. This is going to be a hard one. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Instagram, Threads, Twitter, and Blue Sky as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. You can find our show over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, before we dig into those unsigned prospects, just a quick Memorial Cup update for our London kids. Uh, They did win versus Saginaw 4-2 on Wednesday, but it was a fantastic game. I did watch it. I watched some of it. I haven't caught up with all of it. Yeah, I mean, Saginaw is definitely resilient, but Mm -hmm. London's still a better team. I think we all knew that. I know, but I did say that Saginaw was going to come at London and and play really hard, uh, given the history there. And so the game was one to one, then two to two. Easton Cowan scored with a 125 left in the game to make it three two. Then Cowan got an empty netter to seal the deal. Uh, Denver Barkey had an assist on the power play goal that tied it at one. And Oliver Bonk had an assist on the game winning goal in the third period. So uh, a yeah, good, Flyers, good turnout from the kids. Flyers guys look good. I will just say that um, some of the inside position that Barkey gets, I don't know if he's going to get that at the NHL level. So at some point he's going to have to change up some of his moves right now. It's going to, it works. Um, and as far as empty net goals, I'll take the, Kendall Co- um Kendall Coin Schofield. Yes. Empty netter over over the Easton Cowan. Just my personal preference. I think so too. I think it was a better overall effort there uh, for the Walter Cup the in speed, the, the speed was there. That was Yeah, good. yeah. Yeah, in the PWHL. Uh congrats yeah. to uh Team Minnesota who won the first PWHL championship there uh as well. London is going to play Moose Jaw or the winner of Moose Jaw versus Saginaw uh, for the cup on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. Turning our attention to the unsigned Flyers prospects. Now, we're not talking anybody who's unsigned, just people who've never had a contract, who've been drafted, uh, but who've never had a contract. And just talking about them in the order, I think, uh, of likelihood of getting signed with the forwards. Obviously, Matt Vamichkoff is at the top of that list. The nope. one thing I would add for him is I'd say it's probably going to be a two-year, not a three-year. I would say so. Uh, next on my list is Alex Bump, uh, who's been pretty successful. And yep, uh, I, I would say Cole Knubel is probably... Next on my list, although the person after that, who we're going to get into in more detail, could overtake him, I think, if next year goes well. And that's Devin Kaplan. Yeah, these next three, and let's just throw Owen McLaughlin in the deep end here, too. These next three could all get turned around for me next year, depending on how they do. So we'll go through them one by one. But yeah, it's it's close. It's very close. And then I would say the next batch is Ryan McPherson and Alex Shearnick. Uh, they have had mixed seasons. Yeah. Um, and we're going to get into the details on Santeri Sulku, who I think is the least likely of the uh, remaining forwards to get signed by the Flyers at this point. Bryce Brzezinski gets an asterisk because he's still technically on the list, but he's not getting signed by the Flyers. So um, for the defensemen, I think Carter Southern is the most likely to get signed by the Flyers, followed by Ty Murchison. Uh, Mateo Mann currently has a contract with the Royals. So, you know, he does have some potential to move up there, but I just don't see him getting anything more than an AHL deal. So that's why no, I'm same here. third. Yeah. 
And then, of course, Brian Zanetti is staying in Switzerland uh, yeah. for the duration, as far as we know. And then our remaining goalie is Jaeger Zavrigan. And I, yeah. you know, we've talked about him. So that's kind of the big picture of the current crop of Flyers prospects who don't currently have a contract. And it is an interesting group because other than Mitchkoff, there's nobody left with, like, I would say a huge amount of talent or potential to be a top NHL player. The Flyers have signed all of those guys already, which is a good thing. Sure, it is. Yeah, so, all right. So let's let's talk um, Alex Bump. So right now he's 20. He's going to be 21 in November. He's just finished his first year, nice first year. Uh, but we have to remember now that he's going to get to be on the higher end of the age bracket in college at some point. So right now he's a 50, 50 in my mind, because mm -hmm. uh, he's going to have to even do better next year. I think to get their attention, to get signed in the future. And I don't think he'll, he might not get signed after two years, might take him a third year. Right now he's with Western Michigan. Yes. If we recall in the NCAA was a fifth round pick. And I would say, He's doing better than I would have expected as a fifth rounder, but still isn't where he would need to be to He's get that. He's not popping DLC. quite right yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Cole Kudu will. I like Cole. I like his work ethic. I think there might be something there longer term, but right now I wouldn't sign him. And he is going to have to have a much better year next year. He uh, he'll be twenty in July. He's a little younger than Bump, so there's a little more runway but he still needs to pick it up. So if he picks it up next year, uh, I have to start considering signing him, but it has to be a really good year. Right. And he had just finished his first year with Notre Dame yes, um, where he had 20 points in 36 games. So like not a terrible first year, but no. definitely room to grow here. And I, I do think like the, the opportunity is there. He just has to take it at this point. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we'll get into Devin Kaplan in a few, but all right. So Owen McLaughlin now we have to have a hard conversation about because I like him. I like the point yeah. total. Uh, was it 20? He's going to be. Um, so he's a guy now who's kind of like a tweener. And again, look, for a seventh rounder, especially one that you draft out of high school, like certainly has a chance. But he, you know. He's 21. He'll get through the whole season 21. He's going into his third season, more than a point a game with North Dakota. He don't think he's strong enough to be a center, honestly. So he's kind of like third line or bust. He's one of those guys in the NHL where right. it's like either he plays the third line or he probably can't play at all at the NHL level. Maybe he could fill in, you know, a little here and there. So, you know, this is a guy – who and clearly, you know, I'm looking on hockey DB. He doesn't weigh 158 pounds anymore. No, <laughs> it's just funny. That's what they have met for weight, but he's certainly that was like not draft a, weight. <laughs> yes, but he's not an NHL weight yet either. And so, right now, I would not sign him. But, and he might be a guy that goes all four years until you decide. And and yeah, I it's might be okay with that. Yeah, it's tough because he is a local kid, right? You know, from yes. Valley Forge. So, you know, you want to root for him. Absolutely. I mean, so and he had some really good moments at development camp last yes. year and, and definitely stood out. So the potential is there, but he has to show it at the collegiate level in order to seal the deal on getting a contract. Yeah, he really needs to just go like a little more bonkers this year scoring wise like he needs to be much more than even three points over a point a game that would be nice you know right now yeah he he needs to come into the nhl at like 180 at least if he wants to have a chance so right now he's just far behind that with ryan mcpherson it's it's interesting because he spent this past season in the BCHL, right? Playing right. for Penticton, which is a really good program in the BCHL. No question. One uh, of the best pro style complex there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So 38 points in 54 games played. So he didn't like completely blow the roof off the joint there. But again, it's a really good team and a good program overall. He is uh, scheduled to be at the University of New Hampshire this upcoming season, which is going to be a huge transition for him. And this is kind of like if he can swim in the sink or swim of the collegiate level, he could still have a chance right now. I don't think so. Yeah. Right now I'm going to say no. Cause I also don't like what he did in the playoffs for assist in 22 games. Uh, should have been better than that, but let's see what he does in New Hampshire. This year is big though. Cause right now it's a no. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, Alex Cernick is another question mark for me because um, first off, I think it's a little hard to gauge uh, where he is right now um, because there have been some injuries, if I recall correctly. Yes. Well, yeah, he's not, he's another one like kind of like uh, to Amala where, you know, early on here, he's not playing a lot of games. No. So I just, there's, I have no concept of where he is. So it's not a no, but it's like nowhere near a yes either. I mean, I've reached out to some people overseas and he's not thrilling anybody. And while he had that great draft story and we all appreciated it, uh, right now that's my best memory of him. Uh, His skating's Mm -hmm. good, don't get me wrong, but he's also 5'10". And so as a 5'10", left or right winger, but it's listed as a left winger, it's going to be hard for him to, you know, to get into the NHL. He's going to have to really come through with a big year this year in the SHL. He's going to have to have a full season. He's going to have to be one of his best players. And because if that's a no, because he's going to be 20 in October, and then I have to start thinking, mm, all right, I mean, I, I might still want him for organizational depth and an occasional play up at the NHL level because I think he could be a good NHLer. So he's a guy I probably hold on to because I like what he probably, at least what he could do in the AHL. All right. So that is the forward landscape, but we're going to dig a little bit more into Devin Kaplan and Santeri Sulku coming up next. The NBA and NHL playoffs are approaching the finals, and it would be incredible to be there in person. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of the NBA, which makes getting those tickets even faster and easier so you can make that dream come true. And prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to tip off. With killer last minute deals, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying those coveted NBA playoff seats, MLB tickets in your town, and more. My favorite part of the Game Time app is that it's great for getting notified about those last minute flash deals. And Game Time lets you save even more with zone deals where you pick a section and Game Time chooses the seat for you. Best of all, they have all in pricing, so there's no surprise fees at checkout. And your tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem with the code Locked On NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Russ, Devin Kaplan, uh, third round pick from 2022, uh, 69th overall. Uh, felt good at the time, New Jersey kid, and he is uh, playing at Boston University. He just completed his second year there, and he had the same number of points in his second year as he did in the first year, but the proportion was much different, where he had much fewer goals, 10 goals freshman year, five goals sophomore year, and those points kind of transferred over over to the assists. And I thought that was a really interesting development for him because, you know, he, he was somebody that we thought was, could potentially score some goals. Right. Yeah. So his goal total is down and his power play time was up. He got two, he averaged two minutes of power play time per instat. So that's a lot. So Mm -hmm. the last thing the flyers need, of course, this is years from now is another guy who can't score in the power play. I kid, but still you have to look at it. He's getting all that time. Uh, 45% shots of his shots getting on net. He is a guy that's kind of got to be around the net or five or 10 feet out. 
So that's not great. Uh, puck battles won 49%. Okay, he can improve on that. 1.26 hits a game is good. So right now I wouldn't do it. He's not getting many defensive zone starts. And so it's like right now he's a guy without a spot too. Because I think he has to be fourth line or bust. I just feel like that's what he's going to be. And if he is, he's going to have to be better. Uh, he's got to get more D zone starts. He's got to score more on the power yeah. play. He's got to win more puck battles. We got to have more of everything. But I'm still willing to wait on him because he's a power forward. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Right. That's the thing is that, you know, you look at his five goals he scored this year. Two of them were game winning goals which mm -hmm. is good, mm -hmm. but he, he went from November 18th to January 20th without a goal. Yeah. I mean, that's a long time. And then his last goal of the season was scored on February 12th. Um, you look at his play for Boston University, which, you know, is a top program, but if you're going to get that ELC with your team, your sophomore year has to be pretty good, right? And has to show progress. and. He played, I would say, his freshman year a little bit on the second line, but mostly third line minutes, right? His yep. sophomore year, he played a mix of the third and the fourth line. And in the last game of the season, he was definitely on the fourth line. So I kind of spot checked where he was in the lineup throughout the season. And it was a little more fourth line than third line, I think, as the season progressed. Yeah, that's not great. And then you look at... Again, when we talk about the power play, I'm going to guess he was on power play too uh, because of, you know, and I remember watching a little bit because, you know, you had guys like Lane Hudson, Luke Tuck, some some more, but Luke Tuck even only had nine goals. Uh, Hudson at 15. And Hudson's a, mm -hmm. you know, he, he could really make things happen out there. So, yeah, for 23-24, so then you got – you got you got Celebrini in there, obviously. He's the leading guy now. He had 32 goals. I don't know how many power play. Uh, funny, Lane Hudson still had 15 goals. And Quinn Hudson had 18 goals. So you figure with Celebrini there, Kaplan could have gotten more points unless he just didn't play with them, which he may not have. Because uh, I know Willander, I think, was on that top power play. And I think I'm, I know Tuck was. He had 10 goals. So he probably was on power play two more than power play one. So that's never a great sign either. And so that that's what, but he got two minutes. So he certainly got some time with Celebrini and it didn't really rub off, you know? Yeah, I think, you, you know, your point about the power play is a good one, that if he's going to do something to make himself stand out um, to earn that contract, the power play would be a good one yeah. uh, to, do, to do it uh, at. But so far that hasn't been a huge asset for him. Uh, I just, I really think he has to make significant growth this year. I think he has to get back above his goal total from his freshman yeah. year. So I'm thinking like 13 to 15 goals and maybe yeah. 20 assists uh, would be a solid year for him. But we'll and, wait on him. We could wait on him. Yeah. At least I will. Yeah, absolutely. I think like when guys get into later college years, you start to worry about, are they just going to ride it out and walk? And right. with him, if he does that, it's not a big deal the way it was with Brodzinski. No. So no, but I mean, he's still, you know. It's worth waiting is what I'm saying, is that we yeah. can wait and it's not a risk in the grand scheme of things. No, it, it's it's not a risk, but it's one where you say, okay, this might be one that got away from the scouting staff. That's where that's where the, the problem with this one would be. Because, you know, third rounder, yeah, you know, it's hit and miss. If you want to get ahead, you got to hit in some of these mid-round picks, you know? And so yeah. that's where I would say, okay, let's just see, see where it goes. Uh, you know, I'm looking in that draft for guys taking – right around that same mark and you know nobody's really blowing anybody away yet in that in that area so i think he's still got time based on his you yeah. know the group that he got drafted with too yeah i think so 
Um, turning our attention to Santeri Sulku, who was drafted in the seventh round in 2022. He's younger, so he's still 19, doesn't turn 20 until June, so just like a couple weeks away. But right. uh, I think, you know, one of the reasons why he was drafted, obviously, he's 6'4". I mean, that's... Yeah, he's going to be 6'4 all day guys. long. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, we'd like to see more... Uh, production he did have some goal production this year that's good but it's Mestis and no offense to Mestis but he's turning 20 in June he's he's sort of heading down the two a mile highway he needs to have a good year this year play as many games as he can 35 to me is not enough for a year but you know if he was because even if he's playing in college he'd probably play in a few more than that if he made the playoffs uh so this year I need to see better. Uh, if he's not ready for Liga in another year, then forget it. Then I, I don't even care if I'm waiting right. on him. I don't care about his size anymore. I'm just not interested. Right. So the interesting thing is that he did get nine points in 11 games in the playoffs. So uh -huh. that was pretty good. The team yes. he was on, um, Hermes, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. So apologies mm -hmm. there. Um, you know, for the Finnish league, but uh, they lost to IPK in the semis of the playoffs. Uh, then they lost the bronze game as well, but he didn't play in the last three games of the playoffs. So there's probably an injury situation there, probably. but IPK, IPK won the league. Okay. Won Mestis. I mean, so, it's and a that's good playoff the team at least. He, right. Yeah. So it was a really good playoff. And that's the team he's going to next season is the winner of the league. So that being said, I think, you know, he has an opportunity, even though it's Mestis, it's the top team at Mest in Mestis. And so, you know, I, I think that's at least a good environment for him to be in to give him a chance to succeed. It's a good environment. I, I'm not going to knock that. I just, you know, need to see him make the jump. And if he's after this year, if he's ready to make the jump, but he goes to, for a year in Liga and then two in the AHL, I, I might give him a chance. Uh, if he's just kind of hovering around Mestis, then I'm starting to fade away on him. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, the way to approach it. And, you know, we'll see how his season goes. And if even if there's an opportunity to jump to the higher league at some point in the middle of next season, right? that would be really great as well. So it could happen sooner rather than later or not at all. But I think uh, the end of next season is going to be an important time for the Flyers to kind of see where where things lie with Solku. So uh, we'll we'll see with these two guys what ha yep. what's happening. Um, I think there's going to be some big decisions to make with you know this draft class and and the guys we've talked about at the end of next season. We'll see whose fortunes uh, have moved up, moved down. If anybody gets signed in the interim, yeah. Mitch uh, Kopp aside, be... there's no steals yeah. here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but there still could yeah, be some absolutely. players here. Right, right, and you know we haven't even talked about the defenseman, which we'll no. do uh, another time. So uh, we will switch gears and talk about the poll for the week and your results coming up next. So this week's off-season summer poll was which NHL team is poised to make the biggest splash at the NHL draft. We brought this up because there was some wheeling and dealing with picks that happened uh, as well as just, you know, the order getting more locked in and people changing personnel and management. And so your choices were the Carolina Hurricanes, Chicago Blackhawks, Columbus Blue Jackets, the new Utah team, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the winner, but not by, I would say, a huge margin, but definitely the winner here is the Chicago Blackhawks that y'all think the Blackhawks are uh, the most likely to make a big splash here. I don't disagree necessarily. <laughs> no, I mean, based on the fact that they made that trade early to kind of mm -hmm. um, fix their alignment of first round picks means that there's probably something else on the horizon. So I think that's what we're all going with those breadcrumbs. And I think that's fair. That's a little trail there. Yeah. And you know, I think that they're really looking forward to building around Bedard and to see what they do this year 
to right. to do that and move their rebuild along is going to be really fascinating to watch. I think whether they use the picks to leverage getting a more of a support player for him uh, that's currently in the league, or they pick you know additional draft picks that have a faster path to the NHL so that they could join him sooner rather than later. I think all of it is going to be really interesting to watch Me uh, from afar. And I'm glad we are not in their division. Um, <laughs> the next two teams were very, very close in the voting. The Utah team and the Leafs were at 26 and 24%. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, Utah, definitely. Uh, mm -hmm. Utah for, you know, they have a ton of draft capital and they certainly are going to want to make some sort of splash for their fans. And I think they are definitely going to try and get a goalie because Ved Melka has not been good. So I could see some sort of goalie trade going down. I kind of remember one draft that I was at. Maybe, maybe it was back in the one in Raleigh uh, where like Trevor Kidd got traded. I could see a goalie of that kind of level getting traded to uh to utah and this one you know maybe it's all mark you know yeah that would be wild Oof. right so so you know we'll see we'll see if that happens the 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 leafs i don't see it uh unless you count big splash like basically getting a lot of picks for marner or a mix of picks and players but yeah. i don't think it based on the complications of like what marner might want to do contract and otherwise free agency i don't think marner will agree to anything by the draft now in free agency he might if he sees a team loading up let's say it's nashville right and nashville's got some deal in place like they might with the leafs maybe it includes soros maybe it includes askarov whatever uh probably soros but i think i still think nashville wants to keep Soros. so but let's just say they're close to a deal marner may want to see who they pick up in free agency before he agrees to it you know so that's why i don't think draft for them Right. But I do think the prospect of a Marner deal makes people think that they could be making. Yes. Yes. Here. The chance of that. Uh, I would put Columbus who's next over the Leafs because I think mm -hmm. Don Waddell definitely wants to get things rolling. And, you know, I think he could do some things at the draft and he could even do a player kind of swap. Maybe he swaps out some players he has there for other players and maybe a few more picks. Who knows? Something like that where he really gets the fan base excited. Uh, he's capable of that, and I think that's possible. Uh, Hurricanes, uh, look, they just don't have faith in Eric Tolsky being able to make a deal just talking to, to Tom Dundon, and I kind of agree with him. Unless they bring in another GM type before then, I don't think Dundon's going to do much. Now, maybe Neches, but I, I don't think he'll go at the draft. But if they bring in someone like Chuck Fletcher, as an example, uh, he certainly has enough contacts that he could get Neches dealt probably for some pretty good assets. So that one's up in the air. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think I agree with you that like my order would be Blackhawks, Utah, Columbus, then the yeah. Leafs. Yeah. Um, here, I, I just I agree with you on your assessment of Columbus and they just, you know, they've been stewing for so many years. And now, granted, they've had some of the worst injury luck you will ever see in the NHL. But even with that, I think that, you know, if, if they go gangbusters with the picks that they have this year, they're going to be pretty dangerous for years. Yeah, to come. I mean, Waddell said that he expects them to be good next year. So if he really does, that means he really has to, you know, get moving. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, Utah's going to want to make a big splash for the fans. So I think that'll be fun to watch. I do want to say this, season. going with the comments and all this Trevor Zegras stuff, don't get your hopes up with Tre Trevor Zegras. Uh, the reason the name is even out there is because everybody knows that, or at least we've heard that Pat Verbeek got annoyed when Zegras held out, right? But he did eventually sign. He didn't have a great year. I get it. They know what kind of talent he has, and they know what's com coming there. So I think based on who they take in the draft, now they're kind of a wild card. They could go anywhere from Levshunov to Zane Parekh to Hellenius to, you know what I mean? So I think it's going right. to be important to see who they take in the draft as to um, 
where Zegers might be going. If they continue to go defense, I don't think they're going to trade Trevor Zegers. If they get Hellenius, you know, then they have Hellenius and Carlson and, you know, McTavish. And then maybe Zegers is, you know, expendable. Can be traded, expendable. Thank you. Could be traded at that yeah. point. And maybe that happens on day two then. So I'm not expecting it on day one, at least. Yeah, so that I, Anaheim was one of the suggestions in the comments of another team that could potentially uh, do something here. And obviously it is around the, the Zegras issue. Um, uh, Mike commented, whoever gets the goalie they need will be the better team after. And I think that's like a really interesting way to look at it. Uh, you know, we did talk about that a little bit. And I think that, you know, if whether it's through a trade or you know, then trading picks or trading assets so that a free agent is there's room for a free agent goalie that they want. Right. I think, I think that the goalie movement this off season is going to be something to watch. Yeah. Obviously not everybody's going to get their wish, but I think Utah is, I'm, I'm still going to say Omar to Utah. All right. You heard it here first, maybe. Um, I I think that would be fun, though. But uh, we will be back on Monday with another question to ask y'all. So looking forward to that and seeing what your responses will be. We'll have our nemesis of the week and more. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got mailbag questions or a prospect you want us to take a look at, let us know on Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at LockdownFlyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube that's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Find Locked On Sports today available on the free Fire TV channels app. Have a great weekend, everyone.